might fail on the first try. That's all right. We'll give him three more. That's right. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. It has to be flashy. The time has to be what, what group are you actually representing today? Uh, Do we start recording on the We can say American Land or Ohio Sheet and Wool. Yeah, we'll just go that way. Wait, so we don't press record? Nope. It says we're streaming, but I don't see anything here. I don't think we're on. Because the streaming is. There we go. Okay, go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone, and, and welcome to our first uh, webinar. I'm Tom Wolford, the president of the Lincoln County Chief Improvement Association. And we kind of put this program together today to talk about land. Uh, we brought the uh, our other sponsors, the Ohio Sheep and Wool, uh, and uh, I believe that takes in the, the market land group also. So uh, we brought Nick Forrest in representing that group. He's from Cincinnati area, and he's going to show us a little bit about the meats, and then a little later uh, we'll have Chef Mike in, and we'll talk about uh, uh, some dishes and how to prepare lamb. So it's uh, uh, a great, great thing today, and we welcome everybody aboard. Nick? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, a little bit about myself, how I got into this business. I am a sheep producer from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we raise about 25 head of commercial uh, sheep. Our market is mostly your 4-H FFA kids, and then we have an ethnic market uh, from Miami University. A lot of the professors down there like our lamb. We also sell to local meat shops around our area. So we're very fortunate today to have one of our producers down in Cincinnati uh, having the ability to have a lamb that we have out here right now. This lamb is a Suffolk, or no, I'm sorry, a Southdown sheep that was born in October. So it's about five and a half months old. Uh, it weighed about 127 pounds when we took it to the har bee harvest. And the, um, when we uh, got the carcass back, it, the carcass weighed about 52 pounds. So it was a little bit under what the standards are for a carcass. Uh, at the 50%, but it's making it up on the color and the, and the great uh, leanness that this lamb has. What we'll do is we'll talk about the, uh, the, the uh, cuts of the lamb, we'll talk about the primal cuts, and then we'll break it down and show you where we do at the retail end. So let's start with the, the front end of the lamb. We have the shanks and we have the shoulder. The shoulder and the shank is probably your least inexpensive, or I should say inexpensive parts of the lamb that you can, if somebody is brand new to lamb and want to try a piece of lamb, I think that the shoulder is something that is really uh, a great opportunity for them and they won't have to worry about uh, the cooking assets of this. Uh, the shank part is a great, great uh, a, uh, I would say probably one of the places that a lot of people, especially in chefs, use. Uh, we have a place in Oregon that had a restaurant that uses all shanks and has an Italian restaurant and they are just outstanding. I had an opportunity to visit the restaurant. Uh, the only problem he was said was he, he goes through so many shanks that he was hoping uh, as a, a me representing the producers that we can probably get a six-legged animal instead of a four-leg so we have more shanks available. But I, I told him, I said, that'd be the ugliest looking sheep running around in the pasture, but uh, all in all, He's absolutely right. These are excellent quality uh, shanks. And I, here's a, one that we cut up yesterday just to show you the marbling and just the flavor of that piece of meat. Uh, this is something that's really inexpensive. Like I said, anywhere from $4.99 a pound at retail to $6.99 a pound. But it's very good for braising. And we made a uh, lamb shank dinner the other night. My wife and I, we use cranberries and uh, as the main thing and, and, and we braised the, the, the shank first put it in a sauce of cranberry um, and a couple other items just to let it set for about two hours made some mashed potatoes with uh, uh, with uh, horseradish and some spinach and put that the, the shank on there it was outstanding uh, and my wife is one of these picky eaters so that was very very good next thing is, is a shoulder we can do a lot of things with the shoulder. If you look at this, this is the arm part where the shank comes off of. 
This is where you have a very, very good piece of meat. Very inexpensive, $4.99 a pound, or even $5.99 a pound. But just look at uh, the, the meat on this arm chop. A lot of people are very timid when it buys lamb. They're scared because of the prices. Uh, this right here is something that I recommend when I work at Kroger. Uh, I've been with them for 44 years, and I worked in the meat department for many, many years. When customers want a chance to use lamb, I always offer them to come to uh, this part right here, the arm chop. And the reason I say that is inexpensive, like I said, put some olive oil on it, put some lemon pepper on it, put it in the refrigerator for about an hour, put it on the grill, a couple minutes, five minutes on both sides, you get your piece of great meat. Matter of fact, I compare it to steak because it's very, very tender and very nice. If you look at the other end, we have the, sh the blade steaks. Blade steaks are very intimidating too. On um, this one is very nice because there's a lot of meat to it, but a lot of people they they don't prefer it because there's a little bit of gristle, a little bit more fat than your arm arm uh, steaks, chops. But by God, the flavor is there also. So on this one, we did it a little bit thicker chops just for the flavor, and I guarantee you that really this is a very nice piece of meat right there. If you're just new to lamb, I would like I said before, the shoulder part is inexpensive cuts but it's really a good one too. I forgot to tell you about the neck. The neck is mostly probably something that a lot of uh, people don't use in their cooking, but I found that when we sliced into this and you braise it and you can use it for uh, sauces and you also you can use it in stews, but the, the, there's a lot of meat if you look at that. There's a lot of meat useful in there. A lot of people they trim the meat out and make ground uh, lamb. But there's also an opportunity there for you if you are a producer or a chef. Uh, we can, with the shoulder, we can also bone that, uh, bone it out to make it a, a boneless shoulder. They are excellent when it comes to roast. Uh, we had our banquet in our county last week, and we had a gentleman take a, one just like this and uh, smoked it, and it was the best taste of lamb I've ever had in my life. Uh, so we go from the shoulder down to the next cut. One of the things that a lot of people don't use is the belly. This is your lamb belly right here. Has the flank, has your little bit of bones there, and it has, what it does is you, shut, you cut it off of the section of the loin and, and the rack. So you got this big piece of meat, what do you do with it? Well, what we do with it, we do to take the tail off, make our ground, we trim it up, you can do two things. You can always take that meat, here's the bone part, get your knife, and then just go in there and just trim it away from the bones and you'll have a nice piece of meat coming off. What we would use it for is pinwheels. We would take that meat, cut it in strips and then make little pinwheels either using broccoli or cream cheese or something like that or even bacon, wrap it around bacon and, and make a delicious uh, appetizing meal. Or we did what we did, we cut the, made ribbits. We call these Denver ribbits. What we do is we cut them, trim them up a little bit, put them on the crock pot, put some barbecue sauce on them, outstanding product. So then you got some many things you can do with this whole carcass. And that's what's so nice about American lamb, it's very versatile. You can do a lot of things with it. So let's go into the next part. Uh, this is where you have your middle meat, which is your ribs and your loin. Here's your, your rack comes from this, and then you have your, what you call your T-bones come on that end. So this is probably your most expensive cut. What we, by the standards, we usually cut between the fourth and fifth rib. You come down here at the 13th or 14th to 15th rib and cut that, and that's between the, the, the uh, leg and your middle meat, which is your sirloin. And then you come and cut it right in the middle that separates your ribs from your loin. But we usually keep it, on our market, we usually keep it whole so we can use more of the, the as make a chops out of it. We can get more chops out of it this way we can. So out of the front part, you got your rib. Here's a couple rib chops. Very nice, a little meaty, very good place to use it for, like I said, the same thing with the arm, a little olive oil, a little lemon pepper, and, and away you go on the grill. On the other end, you got your the best meat, I think, one of the best meat is your T-bone. We call them mini T-bones. This is your loin chops. And a lot of your people that uses uh, these, 
If you put it in a grill and, and season it, I guarantee you, if you tell somebody, you don't tell somebody what it is, they think it's meat, uh, beef because the flavor is so good on this, on this meat. And you see we cut them in a little bit thicker chops, but I'm telling you, they'll cook through and they'll taste great. And the chef's going to use a lot of these today in his presentation later today. Um, another thing that we found out on the uh, lamb chops is you can trim these up and you get a lot of Australian meat is very, very small. Uh, what we do is we like to make uh, popsicle sticks. So what we do is trim this away a little bit and then trim it up even more to get like a holder. And what I mean by a holder is when we do special cuts at home, we like to make it easy for us to carry around the house or carry it outside when we're eating. This is perfect. Put it on the grill. You don't need a plate. You don't need gloves. Just grab it and go. And we do this a lot at our house. Uh, we did this down in Texas when I was down there doing a, a show. And the, the chef down there used mesquite wood and he put 150 chops on that grill. And I think I probably ate 35 of them. They were that good. So they are very easy to do. You grab them and go. I love it. This is a great tool. Great appetizer for people. It's also great just to get that flavor of lamb going that way. Uh, still on the middle meat. This is your, your classic, uh, what you hear, a rack of lamb. We kind of decorated it up and fixed it up a little bit fancy. You have your, uh, your T-bones uh, steak on it. They call it, you can split it to have a four rack, or you can have it like we have here, an eight rack. And this is, to me, probably the most expensive meat on the carcass and at the retail end, but it also is a very flavorful piece of meat, too. So what we did was we trimmed the bone here to get down to the meat and eliminate the, uh, the middle bone and, and the, the nervous uh, cord. And then we trimmed it up a little bit down this way. I should go this way. Squared it up. And then all we did was cut in between like we did here with this. We did the same thing and just Frenched it out. And they call this a French rack. You talk about a piece of meat. This is excellent. Uh, the best recipe for that that I used is a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic uh, shavers inside the meat. And then what I would do is uh, put it in a cookie bag, put it down the grill. Well, I was, I was probably sear it first, put it on a hot plate, sear the flavor in both sides, take it off and uh, put it in the oven for a little bit, bring it out about when it's about three quarters of the way done and throw some Dijon mustard on it on both sides, some panko crumbs on top of that, put it back in for another 15, 20 minutes. Excellent piece of meat. Very good recipe too. Okay. So we got the ribbits, we did the middle meat, and now we got the, the big guy. This is the real nice leg. This is, uh, I would say, probably around 12 pound leg right there. Uh, if I was a consumer going to a Kroger store or a, a Thriftway or any other store around that area carries this, uh, this meat right here probably be around 80 to 90 pounds, or 80, 80 to 90 dollars uh, if you look at the, at the retail. The only problem with that, how many people or customers are going to buy that? And that's the problem we have as sheep producers and, and they very rarely they sell that much. Uh, you might sell it if somebody was having a big a banquet, but something like this is, is very hard to do. So what do we do? We decided to go ahead and, and break it down into seven different meals. So you got an $80 piece of meat. You could trim it right here, which would be your shank, which was something like this right here. Take that off. And then you could trim this up to make some steaks. Go ahead and bone it out. And then you got your, your steaks here. And then you got a couple roasts there. And whatever left you have, you can make fajitas out of it. You can make ground lamb out of it. Or you can make stir fry. So there's seven different meals out of this $80 piece of meat for two or three people. So it's wor well worth the time and effort in breaking that down. This to me is one of the better uh, meats to use because it's so versatile. You can use it so many things. The one thing that I like to use to do is make a the butterfly it out. When people say, well, how do you butterfly it out? What we do is we take 
the bone off of it. Here you have your, the leg bone, which is down here. It goes about right there, and, and it goes like that. So you trim that bone out. Then you take the blade out of it, too, which is right on top of it. And these are excellent for stock, okay? So don't throw these away. Use it in stock. It's excellent quality right there. You old herd of chicken and beef stock, use some lamb stock. It's very good, too. So what we do is we trim it out, take the bone out, and we make a butterfly out of it. Let me show you here. This is what we call a butterfly piece of meat. Now, switchers, <clears throat> when you ask them to butterfly it, they have not a clue what to do. And they'll butterfly it all right, and pretty soon it'll look like a dead bird instead of a butterfly. So what you have to do is educate them that you have to have the tips on the top, tips at the bottom. And why do we do this? Well, this is what I like to do. I would make a concoction of broccoli and cream cheese, and then roll, put it in the middle of this, and then roll it like this. And then I would tie it up, okay, tie it up and put it in the oven. And when you slice into it, you got your vegetable and you got your meat and it's all ready to go. Another thing a lot of these guys do is, is they'll, they'll actually grill it like that because there's a big chunk of meat and it can be uh, cooked in a little bit faster time instead of roasting it. Uh, on the grill wise, all you need is salt and pepper, a little garlic, Put it on a grill, it's an excellent product too. You can also break it down in different cuts. You got here's one of the seams, which you break it down even more for your uh, roast. So you look at the seam and it has about two or three different kinds of roast on here. So there's a nice roast right there. So if you don't want a big piece of meat, you got a small one for two. That's a great piece right there. Put a little salt and pepper on that, a little garlic, it's ready to go. Uh, I do work a lot with Colonel D Spices out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we do a lot of their little spices program. Uh, it does a great job. Uh, and we do, the best thing I found out we do is uh, Chipotle raspberry spe uh, spices. And the main thing we use is ground lamb. And if you take a look at this, this is ground lamb. This off of this lamb, we just we didn't put any other filler in it. That's all nothing but just lamb. This is probably the best tasting we ever had. We put uh, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the sapote raspberry seasoning on it, let it set overnight, and make some meatballs out of that. And I guarantee you, you'll get the real flavor of the chipotle a little hot. And then you'll get the sweetness of the raspberry coming back off of that. So that's another thing is very simple to do. A lot of people like to use this in chili. A lot of people like to use it in taco mix. So we make a margarita type taco. So what we do is we grind the lamb parts we have, put it in the uh, on a grill or not a grill in a pan, and do saute some onions and some peppers. And then we put the ground lamb in it, and then we use about a oh, about a cup of uh, margarita mix. And then we put that in, use some taco seasoning, then squeeze about two whole limes on it, and then put it over chips, nacho chips, best tasting you ever had. And it won't get you drunk. So all the alcohol burns off anyway, but the flavor is there. So that's what we have. Uh, some of the things, I don't know if you have any questions out there or not, but feel free to ask. Uh, we have the opportunity, if you like, we still have plenty of time. Um, I just want to throw a couple things at you. A lot of people don't realize the liver. Um, this liver came from this animal, and I, I, it's, a, it's a very nice looking liver. If you don't like liver, you're in for a surprise because liver, in, especially in lamb, you can make liver parte. You can, you can grill this with liver and onions like my grandparents used to do all the time. But look at the color on this. It's an outstanding piece of meat right there. And a lot of people don't use it as they should. Uh, another thing that we use is the heart. We, we cut this up. What they do when they inspect the animal, they inspect the heart to make sure there's no uh, worms or anything inside. They make sure that there's a healthy animal. Same thing with the liver, they have to take that out and make sure it's all edible. 
And if it isn't, they, they grind the whole carcass and throw it out the door. Uh, that's part of the USDA grading. They have to look at the whole carcass plus the insides and make sure it's edible for people so they can put their stamp on it. So this lungs or the heart right here is an excellent product, especially pickled. You can pickle it and it's an excellent product for pickled uh, heart. You can grind it up and it's an excellent product for that. So there's a lot of things in this lamb that you can do and it'd be exciting uh, to use the different things. Um, uh, the lamb chops, I'll go back to the T-bone. The um, th there's a, a lot of people are scared of this because if you would get, let's say a rack like this with the cuts and you look at it, here's the same product in here. This right here would probably be around $29.99 a pound. Is if, that's by your, your most expensive cut on a lamb. A lot of your restaurants, if you go to a restaurant and you ask for a four rack of lamb, you're going to pay around $49 to $50 for it. But the, your flavor is there. And I try to tell people when I, when I go out and talk, I try to get people to buy the whole carcass. Why? It, it's a lot less expensive. If you take the individual cuts of all the retail and add it up, you're probably paying maybe $200 more for this lamb if you just buy it a whole carcass. A whole carcass like this would probably be around, <clears throat> I say, $230 to $269. Uh, if you broke it down to the parts and, and figured it out at the retail end, you're probably paying about four to five hundred dollars. So we try to tell people to, to, to buy the whole carcass, break it down, and uh, that, that's one thing. Another thing is when you break down this carcass, you don't have to buy a big freezer to put this in. You can use a regular small freezer, even your freezer in your uh, refrigerator, that it's going to break it down and, and you'll have plenty of room for it. Uh, that was the hardest thing I had to tell people was that they didn't have to go out and buy a big deep freezer for for lamb and a lot of people were so used to pork uh uh freezer when you cr yes In Licking County, he'd be the man to talk about that. Fresh lamb is, is a little tough to find actually here, but we can get it in or you can buy off producers and actually have one process to where you have fresh lamb. But typically when it goes in the freezer, you're going to be, you know, in a lot of places it's up frozen meat here. So. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a toughie because there's so many producers. There is, I think Ohio has more producers uh, east of the Mississippi than anybody else. Uh, we have probably around 3,500 producers in the state of Ohio. Um, in our county, I, I'm down in Butler County and southern part around Cincinnati. Uh, we do have like a, a, a co-op. And what we do is if somebody has lambs in the spring, we have some in the spring and fall too. Uh, this young man who had this, he has uh, some Southdown sheep that he has lambs in October and September, October area. Where our months of mine are coming in next week. So, I mean, we try to keep meat around uh, year-round in our area. And that's the hardest thing for, for us as producers to understand because we were all taught to have all the lambs born in the spring, you know, right before Easter. Uh, we're now trying to re-educate people and say, hey, look, you can have lamb all year-round, but you've got to change your breeding habits and your, your production habits. So what I do is we used to have them in January and February, for the big lambs for the county fair. Well, we found out we can have them in March and still make the weight in July and August. Um, and, and it took a little bit of chime, but you know, we, th we thought we were smart because the weather in January, February is so cold and them lambs are freezing. And being an old man like me going out there to take care of lambs, I said, we need to have them in March. Well, look at the weather now. It's right back to where it was in January, February. So we're not doing anything this year. Last year was nice because it was March and it was sunny and we had real nice uh, weather and all the lambs was fine. So you, you take it. That's part of production. Uh, another thing we'd like to do, people want to know the carcass weights. What's a good carcass weight? For, and that's what you have to ask your producer. You have to ask your farmer what they produce and what's their average uh, lamb. Uh, meaning that if their breed is big for like a big Suffolk or a Hamp, their carcasses are going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, if they're like South Downs or Catawns, hair sheep or Dorpers, they're going to be a little bit smaller sheep. So ask your producer 
uh, what they what they uh, breed and ask them, you know, what kind of carcass weight are you looking at? Uh, the one we did Saturday at our banquet, it was a 35 pound lamb. It was a small lamb, but the meat was there and the color was there too. And the flavor was there too because we cooked it up after we did our presentation. This one is 127 pounds, like I said, it's 50, 52 pound carcass. But if you look at the meat, like I've shown you, you got the quality right here. And he, a lot of it has to do with feeding too. Uh, a lot of questions were, what's the difference between grass fed sheep and uh, corn fed sheep? Uh, that's a big topic around the country, organic or natural. Uh, I'm a type of guy who, you know, I, I tell all my lambs are out in grass from, from the day they born to the day they're probably around 60 pounds. And we always feed them little supplements on, in between, but we do feed them out to get to that, uh, the weight that I want to do at the, at the harvest time. Uh, we feed them uh, good hay and, and good corn, and we do a, a mineral-based diet too. So when we do our lambs, and this is just our operation, we usually our carcass percentage is anywhere from 56 up to 62, meaning that we have more meat uh, coming in at uh, higher weights. Uh, we take our lambs in anywhere from 135 pounds up to 140 pounds. Uh, we do have some people that, uh, it, according to your breed, you have to understand, some people will think that they can get up to that 125 pounds with these smaller breeds and you're going to have that much fat on it. So you have to really pay attention to what you need. Yes, sir? Quick search on Google. Al's Meat Market in Newark carries it and also Kroger's and Walmart. Locally. There you go. That's what we like. Yes, ma'am. So I have another question. So sure. If someone is at the point of purchase and they see the lamb and they see the beef, like people don't know how to cook. They're not familiar with lamb and they think maybe it tastes lamby or so the cooking process, is it similar? From what I hear hearing, hearing you say, you can roast the lamb, mm -hmm. you use salt, pepper, and garlic, mm -hmm. and it's pretty easy. Is it a slow roast so the meat's not tough? Is there a place that, that is online where people can learn more about how to cook it? Yes, YouTube is very good. Um, there's a lot of things. American Lamb Board has a lot of videos too uh, about cooking lamb and uh, a lot of the chefs. You know, I'm very fortunate. I got to meet a lot of chefs around the country. And, and what you said is, a. a something that really is hard for the lamb producers to swallow. Lamb has always been like a gamey taste. Uh, if you look back at your grandparents, my grandfather was in World War II and they were fed mutton from England and Germany around there. Uh, when he came back home, he was a farmer. He raised sheep and he raised uh, cattle and, and pigs. His problem was they were serving such bad meat, mutton, that when they came back, nobody wanted to buy lamb around here because they didn't want to go back to what they had flavor-wise back in, in the war. So we had that perception where we had to change our way of production, do a better job in, in preparation, a better job in, in production to get the consumer to try it again. Uh, another thing, my wife and I do a, like a Tupperware show where you invite me and my wife to your house we would do a demonstration pretty much like this, but we wouldn't go into this detail. But we would cook four different uh, types of meals in the two hours that we're at your house. And we would give everybody samples. But we, what we try to educate is uh, it's not hard to cook. and Don't be scared to cook, you know, because there's simple recipes to do it. But the fear of buying an expensive piece of meat and then ruining it is, is over. You know, that's something that you have to get over. Uh, for example, I had a lady call me and said, Mr. Forrest, I was at your program, at tu your Tupperware party, and uh, we really enjoyed it, and uh, we were real thrilled about trying lamb. We went to our supermarket, we bought some lamb, we took it home, we cooked it, it smelled the house up, my husband left, my dog ran away, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, you've been trying to get rid of your husband for years, so that's one way to do it, but... She kind of looked at me, you know, and I said, okay, let's go back. Where did you buy your meat? And she goes, well, I found it in the markdown section in my little supermarket. I said, well, that's, that's a red flag right there. You want to make sure it's at the freshest date possible. You, you know, if you're going to use that, check the date on this product, because sometimes it, it goes over just like any product, and you have to be, be aware of what you're going to do.
Second of all, I said, what temperature did you cook it? She goes, I cooked it like I cooked my beef 450 degrees. Well, that just, that was another red flag because that's going to really cut in, you know, cut in your, your flavor and it's going to burn your meat. Lamb has this kind of uh, fat that you see here. That if it goes to a high temperature, it's going to really make it smell bad. I mean, it, do you have to, the old saying is cook it slow and cook it low. Low and slow, that's what we do. 350 degrees, and to take a little bit more time when you, you cook your lamb, and I guarantee you're going to get the flavor. So what I did was I gave her another piece of meat, I gave her a recipe, I told her to do it this way, and then she called me back and she said it was totally different than what it was the way before. What happened was when she said it was smoked the house, she burnt the, the, the meat so bad that it got that fat, and that's when all the smoke and the real bad flavor. But if you do, a recipe that I love is called Italian leg of lamb. I'll get a piece of meat like this, and then I'll salt and pepper it, and then put little chives of a garlic slivers inside of it. And then what I do is I make a paste of uh, basil and Parmesan cheese and olive oil, and just smear that whole sucker all over the place. And then put it in the cooking bag, and then put it in the refrigerator overnight. And then the next day, throw the whole thing in the oven, 350 degrees. Within an hour and a half, two hours, it's ready to go. The good thing about it, that concoction of basil, Parmesan cheese, and olive oil will make your house smell wonderful. We do that around the holidays because my kids love that flavor. Because when they open the door, they know we got lamb in the oven. And it's something that I try to tell people, if you want to impress your family and friends, that's a simple recipe to do. Because it will make your house, I mean, they'll walk in the house and they're, their whole face will be drawing off, ah, you know, it's so good. Yes, sir? Yeah, on the heel, heel time after you've, after you've cooked it, do you want it to sit there for how long? I like to set it for about five to ten minutes and just let it rest, they call it. And the reason I, I want to do that, I want the, the, the flavor in the lamb and the, and the moisture of the lamb to retain itself in that piece of meat. If you take it off the grill or take it off the, uh, the roast or oven, and then you cut into it, you're going to see all kinds of fluid come out. And that's a lot of your flavor. So what I do is, like you said, Tom, I like to let it rest for about five or ten minutes and then slice into it, and then you won't have any of that. You maintain that flavor and that moisture. Okay? Any other questions? Very simple recipes. Uh, like you said, another thing is, you know, a lot of people are scared of paying $80 for a piece of meat like this and don't know what to do with it or $29.99 because you know they've heard so much that this is the, uh, the best part of the lamb and it kind of a showcase you know with the little white caps on there and stuff like that. But they really don't realize that they just have to take their time and, and cook it slow. Uh, I know my kids, the older ones are always in a hurry because they have football or soccer or baseball and they're always doing something. I tell them to do a lot of crock pots. Uh, you know, that is something that's really interesting to me. I like to put a, like a piece of meat. What we do is we make shredded lamb. Uh, we use uh, a shoulder. We'll take the bones out and, and throw it in a crock pot with chicken uh, stock, salt and pepper, and some onion flakes. And let it sit there overnight. And then when you wake up, you're going to have that aroma once again in your house. But then when you open up the, the, the crock pot and, and pull up the meat, it's just falling right off the bone or just falling. Then you just get some baguette bread, put some slices on it, and put a little uh, uh, tahiki sauce on top. Great little appetizer, a great little meal when the kids come home from school. So it's, there's so many things you can do with, with lamb. Another thing, uh, I, I loved grilling. And you can grill any of this stuff on, on a grill. And it has that flavor just like anything else. But once again, you want to do it slow, uh, slow roasting at a low temperature. Okay? Any questions, anything else? Please, we got plenty of time. Okay? So the meat that you see at the fair is like the booth that has a, the euros. Like, how is that cooked? Because it's on a steak mm -hmm. and they shave it off. Yep, it's like a pressed meat. Um, we did something at the state fair this year, it started last year, and uh, they're very well known for their gyro sandwiches, or heroes, um, where they mix a combination of so much beefs and so much lamb. And they put like 80-20, uh, 80% 80 beef, 20% lamb, or even 70-30. Uh, as a lamb producer, I would want to see 
more of a lamb product at a lamb booth instead of promoting beef. Uh, what so we not did uh, in most of your restaurants, no, it's it's, it's about uh, 60, 40, 80, 20, something like that. What I come up with, I and mean, what Roger Hine and Ohio Sheep and Wool did, we we, we worked with uh, Colonel D Spice Company, and they came up with a Greek spice. And what we did was we used a whole egg like this, put it in a big old uh, crock pot, or a, uh, and then put chicken stock. And then what we did was we, we smeared it with that Greek seasoning all over that leg and let it set in refrigeration overnight. And then we put it in the chicken stock and then we added more of the spices on top. You cook it for about a day, all that stuff comes right off. So then the next day, you it come, like I said, it shreds all by itself because it's been in there. You put it in a, like a pita bread, puts that shredded lamb on top, put your uh, black olives, your... your uh, um, lettuce, tomato, onion, and then put that tahiki sauce on, you're getting the, uh, the full flavor of lamb on that one. And it's a good flavor, you know. And if you look at a lot of the Greeks, I sell to a lot of ethnic uh, backgrounds. And it's, it's amazing, the Greeks, they like the lamb anywhere from, uh, say, 30 to 40 pounds. And that's live weight, not, not carcass, that's live weight. And then I have my ethnics of uh, Middle Eastern countries, they like lamb between 60 pounds up to 80 pounds. And then I have my West Africans will take anything from 100 pounds up to 200 pounds. So each culture has a different uh, weight thing that they want to work with. And it's very interesting that I can sell different types of lamb to different cultures. You know, and where we are, you know, when they first came to my house, I had a band saw and I said, let me break your carcass down. And they said, no, no, we don't, we don't want these cuts like this. They want it, they just get a big old cliver and just cut them in big chunks. And they make stews, and that's what they like. And it's the best tasting stew you ever seen in your life. They really are. So you have, you know, you have the ability to uh, sell at different types of consumers. You know, the Americans are really the hardest ones to sell. I mean, the ethnics are, they, that's what they were, you know, raised on. And that's what our problem is as producers. Most of our kids, or myself when I was raised, we was raised on pork, beef, and chicken. You know, we, we was fortunate that we had a grandfather that raised sheep, so we did have some lamb. But the majority of the kids nowadays, they haven't had experienced, you know, lamb in their, in their uh, diet back when they were kids. But I would say to millennials now, they're wanting new products. They want new adventures. And lamb is starting to come on a lot of menus uh, in restaurants. Um, Arby's, if you look at Arby's, their Greek gyro, their traditional one, that's lamb. But they won't say lamb, they say it's traditional. You have to ask, ask the people in the restaurant, what is traditional? And the first thing out of their mouth, it's lamb. Why well, I didn't hear you. It's lamb. I said, it's lamb. Yeah, give me two of those. You know, you have, if, as a producer, you have to go out and make these people be proud of what you're raising. My wife, when I was on the lamb board, we used to go to restaurants all around the country, and my wife used to hate me going to restaurants because I said, you got American lamb on the menu? And they said, no, thank you. We get up and leave. You know, but I, that's me. I, I want them to be, I want them to show, you know, if I see lamb on the menu, I'm going to ask. We went to one of the restaurants in New York. We had a big uh, meeting, and uh, the, the vice president and myself went to this restaurant because we knew they had lamb. And I said uh, to the waiter, I said, do you have lamb? I see you have lamb on the menu. Oh, yes, it's great. Is it domestic or imported? Uh, I think it's domestic. I said, what do you mean you think? I like to know. So could you ask the chef? So he went back there, and he comes out like this, and he says, it's domestic. I said, okay, if it's domestic, I'll take a plate. And then the young lady was with me. She said, I'll take a plate. So we had a glass of wine. We we're waiting. And here comes, here comes a, our meal. And there was chops are like this. And I said, that's not domestic. Well, it is. I said, let me talk to your chef. So the chef came out, and he was a big boy. And he says, can I help you? I said, is this domestic lamb? I believe it is. I said, I don't think it is. I said, well, I got a box back there. I'll bring it out and show you. I said, okay. He brought it out. It was New Zealand. And I said, sir, what's that? Oh, I, they, saw, some, they sent me the wrong stuff. And I said, sir, I'm a lamb producer. I hate to be a, a butthead, but I want, you know, you're going to promote American lamb. I want to see American lamb. 
And by God, he was very nice. And he sat down and had a couple of glasses of wine with us, and he paid for our meal. And he apologized, and he said, we will have make sure that the purveyor does it the next time. So, you know, my wife hated me to do it. I used to go to, we used to go to, what's that restaurant? Uh, not Tumbleweed, but uh, oh, Longhorn Steakhouse. But that's, that's uh, Australian lamb. You know, and so I gave us a, a, a gift card to go there, and I had lamb, and I said, it's just domestic, and she goes, no, no, sir, it's Australian. I go, ooh, I don't know if I can eat this, you know, and I said, but I got my little free card, so I'll go ahead and try it. It was good. It was very good chops. It was very good. Well, do lamb producers have to work with any restaurants in the Yes. Area? There's a lot of producers around the country that does work with uh, restaurants. Yeah, the, the whole... Uh, the biggest problem with working with restaurants is some of the restaurants just want part of the carcass, and they're trying to sell the whole carcass. Now, what we do years ago, and we're still trying, is trying to get the, the uh, chefs to use the whole carcass if they can in their, in their presentation or in their way of doing it. I mean, there's some that you can use as appetizers, um, like coffers, lamb coffers is a great thing. It's on a stick. It's made out of ground lamb. Excellent product, and we sell a lot of that down in my brother's meat market as appetizers, but we also may put it in pita bread and put the tahiki sauce and all the fillings on it too, so it's a good product. Um, we have producers that sell at farmer's market. You know, if you have a farmer's market, they, sometimes they, they have lamb uh, products to sell. So another thing is if you, if you can't get a hold of Tom or if Kroger, Kroger has lamb that comes from mostly from uh, Denver, Colorado. They're a superior packing company. They come from Dixon, uh, California, and also from Denver. But they also have, uh, Kroger has some local lamb that comes from uh, Athens, Ohio, Donovan Ostrom. It's what, Willow? Willowbrook, Willowbrook Farm, thank you. Uh, excellent product, uh, mostly polypeg sheep, and he's been in the business for about uh, 10, 15 years now and has a great, great market. And his lambs are very good too, good quality. So that's, that, that, that's in, yes sir. Two things, real quick, you mentioned ground lamb and grilling it, I might talk about that for a minute, and you also talked about smoking the front the shoulder there, mm -hmm. and talk about how that differs, if it does differ from when you're smoking the beef or pork. Um, the, only re the only thing I can say about smoking, and Chef probably can talk about this a little bit more when he comes up, what this young man did at our banquet is he took a whole uh, shoulder and smoked it, but he did use the sauvet type cooking where they put it in a bag and put the seasonings and smoke in there and then cooked it for 20 hours at 140 degrees. That's, that's his way of doing it because what happened was after he got done, he put it in the refrigerator and let it, you know, let it set for about two or three days because we still had you know, time for our banquet. And we had almost 60 to 100 people cut 10. So in that instance, that's why he was using the solve way of doing it because he was cooking everything in advance so he didn't have to rush the day of because he's got a full-time job too. But when he, when he took the shoulder out of the bag, out of the refrigerator, out of the bag, he put it on the grill to get that char flavor. And all he had to do is just, it was fully cooked, but he just wanted that you know, char flavor. And then he just shredded it and it was outstanding flavor. Uh, there's ways you can smoke it with the different chips. If you want to smoke it like a, uh, like a brisket or something like that, I would say there's opportunities. Uh, there's a company, a uh, restaurant down in Owensville, Kentucky, that buys nothing but mutton. Uh, mutton is a sheep that are about a year, a year and a half old. Um, the, the texture, the flavor is a little bit stronger. In some cases, because I've tasted some lamb that was two years old and it was just as good as lamb that was six months old. But it, the way they were fed it, the way they took care of it, a lot of it too. But they are well known throughout the United States in selling barbecued uh, mutton. Uh, and what they do, they smoke it on a grill and smoke it in a smokehouse, and it's an outstanding product. So on the ground lamb, you know, a lot of people don't realize ground is really ground lamb is really inexpensive. If you go to Kroger's or any other grocery store, it's only like four to five dollars a pound, you know. And there's so many opportunities. You can make the, the meatballs. You can make the, the kafkas. You can make the taco mix. Uh, you can make lamb burgers out of it. Uh, a lot of your chef competitions around the country, they like the lamb to make the lamb burgers out of it, and they use they usually win the competition because of the flavor of that lamb going in with the different types of cheeses and stuff that they like to concur with. 
Um, we're working uh, down at ACF down in Cincinnati. We're working with uh, some purveyors to come up with different types of uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. And we're using lamb, as, lamb burgers as our product for the burgers. And we're doing a lot of jalapeno uh, meals, a lot of uh, habanero type cheeses and stuff with it. Because down there, they like the real spicy type of lunch meats. Or not lunch meat, but, but uh, the ground lamb and, and hamburgers. So, you know, it, it's something that you could play with. Your, your comment before, you have beef and you, you know how to do beef. And I said you can use the same recipe for beef, pork, and chicken as lamb. But you just have to watch the temperature design on it. Okay. I love lamb broths. <laughs> if you got a good purveyor who can make them, they're excellent products. Uh, we are very, very fortunate. We have two of them down in Cincinnati. We use Colonel D's uh, spices for that. And the lamb broths are very uh, something that you can use the ground lamb on, and it gives you another out of you know using the uh, versatility of lamb in the, in the meals. Uh, we sell. I think it was like 10 years ago, I, I brought up about 200 uh, brats to the, the state fair, and we sold them at the state fair pavilion, and it was one of the best meals that they had up there besides the gyro sandwich. So there's, there's great opportunities uh, to use different products, and, and the lamb is so versatile. Um, I mean, it's just, uh, you can use it any recipe that you have for beef, you can use it for lamb. And you shouldn't be scared to use lamb because it's very, very easy to work with. Just remember low heat and low time, you know, low and, and, and a little bit more time. But people's behavior when they're cooking, it's hard to change. Yes. You know, that mindset, you know, they would know at the point of purchase that it's easy, you know, to exchange a recipe, whether you're using a roast. That's why Kroger did a, a pilot program in Lexington about five years ago where we had different com uh, commodity groups come in and do a display like we're doing here today. They would have all their meat cutters and <clears throat> some of their uh, meat wrappers and, and some of their meat buyers at this symposium like this. And we would not go into this detail, but what we would do is <clears throat> try to educate uh, the consumer about how easy it is to do lamb or pork or beef or fish. Each of us had like an hour to two to do it. Well, the guy from beef, he came on and, and he was really a very well-known uh, chef from the, the beef industry. And he had all his spices all around just for one, one dish. And all these people were writing as fast as they can. And he was saying, this is what you want, da, 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 da. And people were just saying, I, I, I give up. I, 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 there's too many spices. So I came in and I, I looked at it, watched his presentation. So I had a, <clears throat> I had a towel like this, and I had something that, uh, for example, I, I, I had it wrapped like this, and, and I had it standing in the middle of my presentation. And I said, uh, well, I'm going to do my first one is going to be Italian kebabs. All you need is, is a cube up some of, of this or the leg, what we use the leg. We'll cube it up, put it in a, in a, a metal cube. Uh, and put some tomatoes and onions and mushrooms. And they go, what kind of spices do you use? I said, well, you have a pen and pencil cause, or a pen and paper, well, I'll tell you. I said, you need basil, you need oregano, you know, it's thyme. And they go, whoa, 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 you're going too fast. And I said this, and I said, why don't you just get you a bottle of Italian dressing and just put it in a bag? I said, that's all you need. And they just go, that's it? I said, it has everything you need. And then that's, that's why it's so simple. We try to develop simple recipes for our consumers at the, at the store because if I'm a meat cutter, <clears throat> I only have about a minute to five minutes to talk to my consumer walk in the meat case. Because I won't have time to, to really go into that long recipe that that guy had. But if I can say, hey, ma'am, if you're thinking about some lamb chops or uh, kebabs, get a bottle of Italian dressing. It's a great thing. Let it marinate overnight. Put it on a grill. Oh, my God, you'll have a good flavor. Or have some honey mustard. You know, and do that, you know, just like this one here, when I said salt and pepper, uh, uh, put it on a, a fry pan and, and get it real uh, hot and braise both sides, keep that moisture and flavor in that lamb, and then put it back in the oven 20 minutes before it's finally done, throw sesame mustard on it, smear that whole thing, and then panko crumbs, and then put it back in there. Oh my God, it's, it's like night and day. But it's simple recipes that we're trying to teach the consumer. And, and it, then they don't get scared 
to use our product. Because if you do a, a whole bunch of recipes, they're going to get they're going to get confused, and then the, the flavor just well, it wasn't tasting like this guy did before. Yeah. So. What's the shelf life or storage <clears throat> time frame for lamb versus beef? Uh, it's about the same thing. I would say and it's, it depends on how you store and how you uh, package it. Uh, today we brought this in butcher paper. I had wax paper over it. We put uh, wax butcher paper over it. Then we put freezer paper over that. So I could stick that in the freezer. It lasts about anywhere from six months to a year. If I was going to cray a vac it with, uh, with the gases and stuff, which is a lot of your commercial um, uh, producer, or not producer, but your commercial uh, packers do, you can have it anywhere from uh, 60 days up to a year. But you just have to watch. And if you get leakers, which happens all the time, where leakers is when the air gets to it and the bag is pans, then you have to watch it. But uh, we have a, produ or we have a uh, custom uh, purveyor in Greenville, Ohio, that cuts the meat just like this and puts it in those Cravac packages and then they put a, a USDA uh, stamp on it with the name of the product. What I like as a producer <clears throat> going to a farmer's market, it gives you as a consumer the chance to see exactly what's in that bag. Now, if I had a, you know, a, the butcher paper and I had this wrapped up, you really couldn't see what you're getting. But if I'm selling you a whole carcass, I'm going to wrap it up the best way I can to keep it for you. I can keep it there from six months to a year. Any other folks? Do you have to cook all types of lamb at um, lunch No, but you have, to, you have to pay attention. It's just like if you were grilling a, a, a lamb burger, you want to make sure the internal is around 140 for ground. is a little bit more. Uh, for If I was eating that's these, these uh, T-bones for a medium, 145 or more, but ground lamb probably about 155. For ground, just to say, if I want to get body sick, you know, some people like, like a little red in there, but, but I'm not sure if you know, completely. You, you, when you make a hamburger, it, you're going to get a different flavor. This is going to give you an excellent. Any other questions, guys? We got about 10 more minutes. Chef's getting anxious, he wants to start doing stuff.
We're going to continue on with a couple of little cooking demos today. Uh, we have Chef Lane who's going to do a gyro salad for us today. And uh, he is going to be using a shoulder blade cut. And come on up, Lane, I'll let you take over. Go ahead and start what you're going to do here. Um, all the recipes that we're going to be doing today will be available um, on the Ohio Lamb website or the Lamb website. Um, we got the recipes from today. But feel free to go on there. There's tons of recipes, uh, a lot of different cuts that you can use. Um, lamb is readily accessible in our area. A lot of local lamb is available. Kroger's does a lot of local lamb for us um, and the community. I think it's just that matter of going a couple more feet down the grocery aisle to try something new. We have a vibrant market here in Columbus that does a lot of lamb. Um, a lot of local chefs and artisans are working with a lot of lambs on their menus now. So. We, uh, we like to play with it, we like to introduce it to some of our customers, and we actually run a restaurant here where we're featuring a couple specials this week. So I'm going to let Lane take it away here and do his um, gyro salad for you. Um, I'm Lane, I'll be doing my gyro salad today. So we are going to start with this nice shoulder cut. We are going to put it in the bowl and add our soy sauce, our Dijon mustard, our honey, our grated ginger, and our chili powder. So what we're going to do with this, we are going to rub it all over, get the whole thing covered and coated, and then you would set this in the fridge to marinate overnight. We already have one that we've kept marinated that we are going to take and we are going to put it on the grill. Now while that is going, we are going to make a tzatziki dressing for the salad. So what you are going to do is you want heavy cream, you want non-fat Greek yogurt, lemon juice, honey, Cold. Nice and cold honey. <laughs> Does not want to pour. Uh, you want seedless cucumbers. You'll also find them called English cucumbers. It has a lot less liquid in it, so then if you have a lot of liquid in it, your dressing will become very watery. And then you want garlic. Then you just whisk this together. Why don't you tell me where you debuted this recipe? Um, we have a local fair in Lincoln County called the Hartford Fair. And I was in the junior division and I won the cook off with this recipe. So this has been tried and tested in one. So we're going to cut up a little dill. And a little fresh mint. Uh, I would recommend fresh uh, herbs and spices for this because you'll get a more pungent flavor than if you used dried. Whisk this 
disk that up, and I have savory dish. Don't play with those. I have a little feta cheese that we are going to crumble on here. And these pita bread croutons. So you want to find that bone, make sure you can cut around that. And you want to slice that up. If you have any of that marinade left, I recommend boiling it on the stove to cook out any harmful bacteria. And then you can re-dip your lamb chop in it to get that flavor reinserted in there. Uh, make sure when you marinate this lamb, you poke it with a fork. That will ensure that the juices get in there. And then make sure you marinate it overnight. It's covered. It brings out a beautiful, sweet flavor. And there we go. There is a gyro wing salad. Nice job, Lane. Okay, so that's one of our dishes. Um, you can do this with a flank. Steak cut, you could do this with a rib chop cut, you could do it with some braised lamb. Um, anything looks really good on that salad to go along with um, the greens and the tzatziki dressing that he had. Our next dish we're going to do for you guys today is a buttermilk braised lamb. Um, this is also on the American Lamb website. Uh, we're going to start by taking one of the shoulder cuts that um, Nick brought today. Uh, we're going to put this right in a pan. Um, we have some fresh buttermilk. Then we're going to rub this down with a little bit. Um, the acid in the buttermilk will help mellow this out a little bit, but it's got a really nice flavor to it. Um, some chopped sweet onions. We're going to pop in here. Um, a little bit of thyme. and a little bit of cracked black pepper and salt. So this is just going to be wrapped um, and put in the oven for about four and a half to five hours. Uh, we're going to have this for the reception this afternoon. Um, we have one that's already done that we wanted to show you and plate up a little bit. 
Um, this lamb is really good stuff to use in a lot of different applications. Um, we have it highlighted on our menu this week as a braised lamb as an option with our carbonara pasta. Uh, we're also doing some ground lamb uh, with a ground lamb slider for this week. So if you're in the neighborhood, stop by and try and get some. Uh, for this dish, we're just going to plate it up with a little bit of um, orzo. Uh, this was an orzo salad with some lentils and some Mediterranean spices. Um, a little bit of broccoli, red pepper, um, toss and a little bit of our house of vinaigrette. Uh, this is a nice um, salad dish that we offer with some nice meat on it. And then just a little bit of the braised lamb that just falls apart. Once you have it in the oven for four to five hours, um, the buttermilk flavor really comes out really nice. Um, so we're just going to pick through here and get some nice big pieces. And we're going to serve that with a little bit of fresh mint. This would go really nice with a nice little herb salad too. With some fresh garnish on there. So there's our second dish today, the braised lamb. And you can do several different cuts for that. You could do a, a shoulder, um, a leg, um, any of the tougher end cuts or the tougher cuts of shanks would be good in that braising method as well. So there's our second dish. Um, our third dish today, we're going to focus on some, some lamb uh, chops or some lamb T-bone cuts. Uh, once again, this was local lamb from Kroger's. Uh, they get it from the Willow Brook Farms in Cincinnati. Uh, beautiful stuff. Uh, if you have a chance to work with it, I highly challenge you to, to work with some of the stuff. It's delicious. Uh, we're going to put together a little bit of rub for this with just a little bit of oil. And we're going to grill these. This is a nice tender cut. So we're going to grill these right on the grill. Um, just a little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to complement this with a little herb salsa or herb rub. So now that we have our seasoned little chops on here, we're going to go right on the grill with these. This is like the filet mignon of the lamb. It's really delicious. It'll melt right in your mouth. Uh, we're going to make this little salsa verte. Um, we're going to start with a little olive oil. Um, we're going to have some chopped green onions. We're going to do a little bit of capers. Um, really bitter flavor, almost like olives. We're going to take these to a nice medium rare to medium. salsa verte we're going to add a little bit of garlic chopped garlic a little bit of chopped parsley a little bit of chopped or zested lemon and a little bit of fresh chopped mint a little brightness here Any questions I can answer about me? You're making us hungry. Smelling good in here. Yes. Okay, so we're going to mix this up a little bit. Our lamb chops are almost ready. So we have a nice little kind of a thick vinaigrette with a whole bunch of herbs and onions and capers. Deliciousness there going on. Um, just a few more seconds here on our lambs. Got some nice little grill marsh going on. And this is really easy to cook. I really challenge you to get out and try some of the local lamb. 
a lot of our local chefs are doing some nice stuff with the lamb. Um, now that it's readily available, it used to be hard to find, uh, but now that it is readily available, I mean, go try it, cook with it a little bit. I don't think you have to really depend on the Mediterranean flavors anymore. People are written really creative with different kind of flavors uh, when it comes to lamb burgers, lamb sloppy joes, um, anything that you can do. Ribs, we're trying some ribs this afternoon with some poison sticky sauce for our reception. So challenge you to get out there and try some different things. Uh, we're going to make a little salad with this. Once again, we have a little bit of our spring mix. Our lamb chops are almost done here. We're going to baste these with just a little bit of our a salsa verte. These lamb chops cook really, really quick, especially the, or the lamb, uh, I call these T-bones, but when you get into the lamb chops, um, they cook relatively quick. We like using them in the restaurant because we can throw those on the grill five minutes down the road. We have it on a plate already, so they're really good to use, they're really quick to use. And we usually do two of these per order. Um, this is going out on a salad this week. And here's our beautiful little lamb chops in our salad with the salsa verte. Put a little bit of the salsa stuff on here. And we have a beautiful dish. Okay? So there's three dishes we made for you today. We will be sending out all the information and the resources they brought with us. Um, I'll resend the email that we did for the original post. Uh, with all this resources on it for you to use. If you have any questions today, please feel free to get a hold of us. We'd love to answer any more questions about lamb. Um, I think this is going to probably wrap it up for our demo for today. So thanks for joining us today, and hope you enjoyed our cooking.